The Stewart 7A model steam plant. This is part 13. Why won't the engine run in reverse? Before all the engineers and armchair experts get on the case, why won't the engine run in reverse is just the title of the video. I know why it won't run in reverse. And the first reason is simple. The expansion link is too long. If you look at the right hand side of it, it's very square and it's just too long, so it collides with the drop arm. This is fairly obvious. I checked it with the drawing and yes, at the right hand side it's too long. Time to dismantle the valve gear so I can trim the end of the expansion link. The die block that slides up and down in the expansion link was quite difficult to remove. Eventually I removed it though with the help of my scriber. Then I lifted off the expansion link, went into the outer part of the workshop to the one inch belt sander. Instead of grinding it square, I decided to radius the end of the expansion link like on a 5A. I'm being very careful not to remove too much metal from it. After grinding away the required amount of metal, I cleaned it up on the polishing spindle. I would just like to mention, because I've had a few comments, my polishing spindle has a full guard fitted, so if the wheel grabs any of the metal parts that I'm polishing, it doesn't throw them through windows or throw them at me. Back in the inner part of the workshop now, and here is the modified expansion link. I now have a kit of parts that when they're put back together, will make the engine run in reverse. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Well, if only. This clip shows me reassembling the expansion link, starting with the die block, and it slides very well up and down the expansion link. I'm pleased with this. Here I'm fitting the first of the pins that hold the eccentric rods to the expansion link. I'm holding the lock nut at the rear using a small pair of forceps. And don't forget, you must not over tighten these pins. Gun metal is a very soft metal. If you do over tighten the pins, the expansion link will be clamped to the eccentric rods. And this you don't want to happen. I'm going to be running the engine very shortly, so it's time for a good dose of oil on all the moving parts. In this clip, I'm refitting the lifting links using the long pin and some Loctite thread locker. It's time to rotate the flywheel and watch what the valve gear does to make sure that nothing fouls. And as you can see, it's completely clear at the right hand side. Before, it was just hitting the drop arm. Time to set the valve gear timing. And always, as a starting point, I always set valve gear timing with the highest lobe of the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank web. It's time now to apply some compressed air to the steam inlet. As you can see the engine runs ok. Previously in this position the expansion link locked up against the drop arm. Now the engine should run perfectly in the opposite direction. Everything's very loose, it's all moving about a bit, but it doesn't matter, it should still run in the opposite direction, but it isn't doing. And just to reiterate, please don't write in and tell me why it's not working, I know why it's not working. I adjust the timing for this eccentric and... It runs perfectly fine in the opposite direction. I could end the video here and explain why it's not going in reverse, but then that would not be a very good tutorial for beginners, would it? It's time to remove all the nuts on the studs of the steam chest cover and have a look inside to see what the valve event is. Yes, there's definitely a valve in there. At this point, I disconnected the valve fork from the expansion link and die block. Then by rotating the threaded valve rod, I set the position of the valve so it travelled equidistantly over the ports for every revolution of the engine's crankshaft. I loosely refitted the cover just with a couple of bolts to see what happened, and as you can see, not a lot. At this point though, I hadn't touched the adjustment of the eccentric, which was miles out. And for a second time, I removed the steam chest cover to have a closer look at the valve events. At this stage, I had not altered the position of the eccentric on the crankshaft. What's happening at the moment is I'm double checking the valve events. And yes, just to confirm, everything is fine in the valve chest. The driving block that moves the valve is a bit wonky. I think it's just been threaded off centre. And as you can clearly see, it is not a tight fit in the slot in the valve because it doesn't need to be. It's steam pressure that holds this valve against the port face, not the block. After making the minutest of minute adjustments, after this I refitted the valve fork and the die block to the expansion link. And check the valve events one more time. Some viewers may be thinking, well the valve gear is not fully assembled, it's wobbling about. That's why the valve timing's out. No, nope, that's not the answer. 
I'm showing all this in great detail because it's a very common problem, but it never happens with valve gear that I make. Even though the valve chest cover is leaking badly, as you can hear by that high-pitched squeak, the engine still runs OK, but only in one direction. Turn the flywheel the other way and it just doesn't want to know. Anticipating quite a lot of adjustment to the eccentric sheaves, I was concerned about the slot-headed grub screw breaking off in the hole, so instead I fitted an Allen head-type grub screw. Then I took the valve gear apart again. And why, you may be asking. This time I'm even removing the valve spindle to take out the valve. I checked the dimensions of the valve against the drawing, and the valve is exactly the same as on the drawing. And in this clip I'm refitting the valve, and as you can clearly see from this clip, the hole in the driving block is not threaded at 90 degrees to the driving block, but it works anyway, it's not cross-threaded, it's just a bit wonky. And this has no bearing on the problem whatsoever. This is getting to be a bit of a deja vu. I'm refitting the steam chest cover one more time. What I'm trying to do is just show any beginners who are watching this that the hobby of model engineering, generally speaking, takes a lot of patience. I've been fitting this valve gear to this steam engine for a customer and friend of mine who lives in the USA. I suppose I could say to him, well, I've fixed your engine, it's got the valve gear on it, and you didn't really need it to go backwards anyway, did you really? But no, I could never say that. I will make it go, it's going to take a bit more effort. What I'm doing at the moment is comparing every part of the valve gear with the drawing. And everything checks out, including the eccentric sheaves which are machined as a pair. These are built as per the drawing. The physical location of the reversing lever shaft is just like the drawing. The expansion link is exactly like the drawing, apart from I've rounded the end. And the drop arm is the same as the drawing as well. So full marks to the engineer who built this engine, you did follow the drawing. Here is the drawing, but I've blurred it out because of copyright issues. So what do you think the problem is? The answer is quite simple. And now for the cliffhanger. That's the end of this episode. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.